If you've ever wanted to grow corn or struggled to grow corn in your backyard garden, then you have to try baby corn. Top three reasons. Number one, crazy yields. You'll get like 20 to 40 ears per plant. Two, you don't have to worry about pollination. I'll get to that in a second. Three, you'll be harvesting corn long before you have any major earwig issues. So baby corn is just the immature cob of any kind of corn, but there are varieties that are bred specifically for baby corn. And this kind is called Chires. I got it from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. The wonderful thing about this variety is that it sets so many ears on one plant and each plant has two to three stalks. Now I direct sowed this seed in a bed with lettuce that I've let go to seed and fava beans, which I've um, also left, even though I'm not picking them anymore, I'm kind of using them now as a trap plant to draw bugs to them uh, since I'm not harvesting that crop anymore. Commonly with mature corn, you want pollination to happen. You want the pollen from the tassels to rain down and pollinate this silk. If you do not have full pollination, you don't get a wonderful cob full of juicy corn. You have sort of a few bits of corn here, a few bits of corn there. It's kind of difficult to actually grow perfect corn. But with baby corn, you harvest before pollination. You are looking for the tender edible cob before that corn is pollinated. So I can actually go ahead and take off these tassels because I don't need them. I don't need pollination. I don't even want pollination to happen. Bye bye. <laughs> so when do you know that you can start picking your baby corn? When you start to see the silk, you can start picking about five to seven days after the silks appear. Now this might look brown, but these are actually fresh red silks. I know that when you grow for mature corn, you look for those silks to turn brown. These are not brown. These are actually naturally a pretty red uh, color. So. Let's just peel this back and I'll show you what this looks like. So if I just take this leaf away, this is the ear right here. Now I want to cut this without cutting the whole top of the plant off. So I'm going to just ease it back and then I'm going to twist it a little bit away from the stem like that. And I'll show you what it looks like. So this is a baby corn. And I find that the taste of this variety of baby corn is perhaps more flavorful than if you were to just maybe grow sweet corn. This has more corny flavor to it. And sorry, there's a lot of mosquitoes this morning. And my favorite way to enjoy this is to saute it. So I love like Mexican street corn. And if you put this baby corn into a pan of oil and crisp them up, make them golden, and then put cheese on them, they are so good, so delicious. There's your baby corn, see? So all of these are immature kernels that have yet to be pollinated. If I had left the tassels up there, they would grow into corn, but this is not a sweet corn variety. This would become like popcorn. Let me tell you about how easy it was to grow this. I direct sowed the seed uh, back in mid-May. Uh, I do have some drip irrigation that kept it well watered. Um, I didn't feed it. I do the no dig system. So I'm just putting compost uh, on top of my beds each season. And that was enough for this kind of corn. I love that this corn doesn't get too tall. Uh, so I don't really have wind issues. It doesn't fall over. And of course the corn's not that heavy and it doesn't sort of, you know, weight down the tops. When the corn was about a couple of feet high, I did notice that earwigs were getting down into 
Um, basically, what I now know was every point where a corn would grow, but at that time, it was just sort of where the leaves came out of the central stalk. So all I did was take some diatomaceous earth and sprinkle it into those joints, and that took care of the problem. I don't know if you can still see, there's a little bit of white left on some of the uh, leaves. That's just the diatomaceous earth that I had put down maybe a month, a month and a half ago. And that took care of the problem, lickety split. And like I said, I don't have to worry about bugs eating my delicious pollinated corn because I'm getting it at the immature stage. Okay, I'm gonna pick some corn and then we'll go cook it. Now the whole reproductive life of corn is pretty wild <laughs> and I've done videos on that. So go get them right here and I'll see you back in the garden real soon.